Hello and welcome to the Car Care Noise Reviews channel and welcome to the Genesis GV70. Very interesting SUV from Genesis. In today's video, we're going to do a proper technical review under the hood. We're going to be focusing on the electric model because this is the electrified GV70. We'll also touch base a little bit on the non-electrified models and we're going to take a look at the outside, the inside and everything in between to see if this is a good car or not right after this. Let's start our technical review under the hood. And this is an electric car, so there is a little sandwich warmer here. Folks, things do get hot in electric cars under the hood, even though folks don't seem to think about that. There's radiators, there's a lot going on here that we're gonna talk about in this video. But before we dive into the electrified model, other models are the 2.5 turbo and the 3.5 turbo. We've covered these engines throughout our reviews of Hyundai and Genesis models. I will leave some, some of these videos here. There are for other cars, but it's basically the same powertrain. Let's dive into the electrical system of this car. And it is, in my opinion, as a repair technician, electric cars are really not gauged by, from a technical standpoint, not gauged by the range and the battery orientation, all that. That is pretty standard stuff. It's really gauged by the thermal management system and then how well they do in really cold weather and really hot weather and how they cope and how that affects your range. So with that, let's talk about this electric system. This electric system has two cooling systems. One of them is for the motors that drive the wheels, the inverters, which are the devices that sit on top of the motor that control that motor. Is it charging? Is it driving? Is it in reverse? And it sends the power, takes it from the battery, sends it to the battery accordingly. There's in this all wheel drive model, there's one in the front, one in the back, motor in the front, motor in the back, inverter in the front, inverter in the back. And then that cooling system also cools the charger which charges the high voltage battery when you plug it in. Now the second cooling system is for the battery exclusively, which is the battery is a giant battery, it sits underneath the car. We're gonna look at that in a little bit when we look underneath it. Now, these two cooling systems can cross to exchange heat between them and the HVAC system as well in a unit called the liquid condenser. That's just a way to kind of efficiently transfer heat in cold weather. But let's start with hot weather. What would happen here if things are very hot? Two things you have with electric cars that you need to heat and cool. The cabin and the battery. That's really what you need to cool or heat. Let's start with the cooling modes. If the cabin is too hot, there's an electric compressor that's gonna come on, pretty much the normal electric compressor that you'll find in many hybrid models. This electric compressor will work just like any AC system. Condenser in the front, evaporator inside. It's gonna drop the pressure, cool the cabin, pretty much like any other gasoline car would. And then for the battery, there's a dedicated cooling system, a dedicated radiator in the front. That coolant will go through the radiator, cool down, go to the battery, cool it down, and then come back. If there is extreme heat and that, that coolant circulation alone can keep the battery cool, it's gonna actually use the HVAC system to cool the coolant, which then will cool the battery. And that exchange between, the heat exchange between the, the battery coolant circuit and the HVAC refrigerant happens in a unit called the battery chiller. Now these are the basic modes of operation from when things need to be cooled. But when things need to be heated is when things get tricky with this system. Because when you first start the car in extreme cold weather, you need to heat the cabin and you need to heat that battery. See, lithium ion batteries are tricky beings. You need to keep them cold from being hot and you need to heat them up when they're too cold. They just need to operate at that perfect temperature to be efficient and safe. The heating system in this car, first thing is the HVAC. It has a heat pump system in a very simple manner that we're now getting into the complications of heat pump systems so they actually work. It basically takes the normal circuit of the HVAC system and flips it. The hot side becomes inside, the cold side out. That's the gist of it. It's a lot more complicated than that. But heat pump systems are actually used in homes as well. They work pretty well up to a certain temperature. So when you need to heat the cabin, there is another 
radiator inside the car next to the evaporator that is a condenser so it's going to cycle hot refrigerant into that condenser and then the blower motor will blow across it heat up the air and then you have heat in the cabin and then the battery when it's cold is actually going to use the coolant that is circulated in the battery circuit it'll pass through the coolant that is being heated by the motors and the inverters which generate heat it's going to heat it up a little bit and then start heating the battery but when things get extremely cold and that's when the limitation of this system comes about when things get extremely cold they do not have high capability to just kind of squeeze every little bit of heat like a tesla system this will actually turn on a PTC heater, electric heater, which will heat up the coolant and that will heat up the battery, which will significantly drop your range because PTC heaters draw a lot of power and they're going to draw it straight from the battery. And that is the limitation of this. Equally with the cabin, when we cannot efficiently warm up the cabin, it's going to turn on a PTC heater until the systems can catch up. We've done a lot of electric car reviews where folks have asked, Wait a second, is that continuous? It is not, because eventually when you start driving, that battery from its normal you know, discharge and charge cycle is gonna warm up naturally. And then the electric motor will heat up as well, the inverters will heat up, and the problem will slowly start to get better. But every time you start a cold, it's gonna severely diminish your range until that happens. So that is the effect of that, and that is the limitation. Their system, while it is more sophisticated than some electric cars where it has the cross between the two cooling systems and the HVAC to try to kind of exchange heat in between them when needed, it is not to the level of Tesla, for example, their Octo valve. Speaking of valves, this car has a series of three-way valves, some two-way valves, some of them for the cooling systems, some of them for the refrigerant to kind of cycle things and keep them as efficient as possible. I wish they would have condensed all these valves and their hoses and there's all kinds of stuff going on here which would have condensed them in a way kind of like tesla did with their octo valve into one unit so you don't have 17 things distributing you just have one unit where everything goes to it and everything comes out of it and that is what the, where the magic is with teslas with their octo valve now let's talk about how the system actually works in the real world it is pretty smooth Pretty refined, and I really like that. The regeneration is excellent in this. Genesis uses the paddle shifters that you normally find in gasoline cars to vary the level of regeneration until you get to iPedal. That's what they call one single pedal driving, which works really well in this. It brings the car to a complete stop. We've reviewed some electric cars that actually don't do that. This one does, and it works very well. Now, the range is 236 miles, which leaves... A little bit more to be desired we could have had a long range model something over 300 miles would have been really nice i feel like 236 miles especially in colder weather it drops a little bit it you can go through it pretty quickly but the best thing about this system and equally even hyundai systems are similar they hold their charge well and they manage their accuracy of charge levels is pretty well you turn on your hvac in cold weather for example you're gonna notice a slight drop, but it's not a significant drop like some other models we've reviewed. So I think the system is designed well initially, but it's still, when you look around kind of behind the scenes, things feel like a little bit experimental, a little bit design one. I think they could have combined and, and kind of make things more compact and better packaged and better thought out. It would actually make this more efficient and then it makes service better, possibly bring back down the price. I just feel like this is design one and we're gonna see later iteration that will be better and better as time passes. Now, the last thing is charge times. This can charge at your regular 110 at home. Don't recommend it because when I plugged it in just to see, it says 99 hours to 100%. Don't recommend that. Level two chargers, is a lot better this is the way to go if you actually own a car like this but we tested this at the rapid charging to see what can you do to get yourself out of a situation where you're running out of charge and you don't have the time to sit at home at a level two charger and charge it we use the charger that can go up to 150 kilowatt it was charging right around 100 to 110 kilowatts we were at nine percent it took 31 minutes to get from nine percent to 80 percent and right around 35 degrees fahrenheit ambient temperature not bad. This is a lot better than many other 
electric cars, but I wish you could have gotten the 18, 20 minute range, but I suppose we could not find a charger next to us that was kind of higher capacity than that. But still, 31 minutes, I think it's not bad. I just wish we had a longer range battery that we wait that 31 minutes and we have now over 300 miles or at least close to 300 miles. In this case, we only had 200 miles or 202 with HVAC on at 80% charge. Let's take a look underneath the GV70 electrified version. Everything is covered, everything is flat. This is an electric car. And I've had a chance to look underneath one that is not electric. Things are similarly covered. And that is the note I want to give you. Let's look at the front suspension. Interesting front suspension. It's like the bottom half is typical luxury car. Two control arms, everything is aluminum. Two ball joints. Nothing really out of the ordinary for a luxury car. If you look at the top, it has a strut. I don't want to call this a McPherson, but it's almost is a McPherson design. So it's kind of a, a mix of the two. Everything is aluminum here, including the knuckle and then a massive caliper. Of course, this is a carryover from the non-electric version. In an electric car, you don't really need brakes that strong. This is not a, an extremely heavy car and it does have regen braking, which works very well on this one. Very long sway bar link and it is steel, which is nice. Now, as we move away from the suspension, this is electric battery. It's very high quality and I just touching the shielding here. This is what protects the battery from the elements, from impact and everything else. Now, the side rails, they do have some openings and I wish these were a little bit better closed, but this is definitely a lot better than I think the G80 we looked at. Things were open. This one is closed in the front. The sides, they do have a little bit of an opening, and here it is closed. You see this little cover here. So that is, I suppose, is nice that they at least covered it up well. As we move back, this is another connection point. Rear suspension is really hidden in this. We're gonna try our best to show you. Aluminum knuckle, single piston caliper in the back with an electronic parking brake on it. Does, has a little decorative cover in the front. It is painted, which is just to give it a little bit better character. Now, this is the all-wheel drive model. That's how the electric one comes. You can see the massive motor through here a little bit and the inverter that sits on top of it. We'll show you more when we look in the back here. It does take a little bit of the storage space in the back. It's a pretty massive unit. Of course, an electric car, there is no exhaust or anything. Everything is covered up here. So they make electric cars where when this is sitting on the ground, this control arm comes up and everything is completely flat. And that's, they even added this little flap on the control arm itself to make sure it's fully flat. And that is pretty cool. Let's take a look at the outside of the Genesis GV70. One thing I have to be said about this car, it is a pretty good looking car. And it's not good looking as a striking or just wowing. It is a sophisticated, elegant look. And that's what I truly respect about it. They, they did do a lot of design here, but they did not really go after the flashy, kind of modern look and all that. They actually went a little bit on the elegant side. And I respect that. I really like that. Fit and finish overall on the outside looks pretty good, with the exception of one thing that I want to mention. This hood, for some reason, it just sticks out here. And it looks like the hood is open or something is off about it. Same thing here. This gap is just inconsistent with the rest of the body. I mean, this gap starts huge here and then it gets smaller and smaller as you go. That's probably the only place in this entire car that the fit finish just feels off. And the rest of it, I think they did really good. I really like the Genesis badge. It just kind of a different. Most manufacturers have a smaller badge, a circular. This one is kind of a, an interesting badge. You notice how they emphasize it with the body line here. Looks very nice when you look at it from inside the car. I really like it. And they raised this, trying to give it a muscular look, but it didn't end up looking like that. It just looks very elegant. This is an electric model. So the front is, for some reason, I mean, this is the fashion. It is closed up. But something that Genesis does that I really like, their charge ports right here. I think it's a great place for it. It's very convenient. 
very smart, it's hidden, and there's nothing that sticks out. But the best part about it is from, from you know, our typical review style, this is a good quality door. It's not flimsy and ready to fall. Look at this hinge. They really spent some time here. Most electric cars, you look at their charging doors, it's just like the wind could catch this and pick it up and break it. This one, it feels pretty sturdy, and I like that. Now, you do. this does have, of course, fast charging. You do have two ports. And here we have a small concern. You did all this car and this really nice door, and this just kind of flops around like that. I wish they would have just... I mean, it's a luxury. This is the kind of stuff that luxury cars, you know, you pay more for nicer things, and this just doesn't doesn't uh, say nice things about it. But not the end of the world. It's a little stuff, right? Going back to the side, I love that the flare arches are body color. It just looks right, looks proper, and it just looks elegant. It doesn't look like something was glued on. 20-inch wheels. There's... Plenty of wheel options in this as you go through the trims. I really like these wheels, and they look very interesting. It's an interesting design, not really copying everybody else, which I like. The side profile of this car is very interesting. I think it's a very elegant design. It does take a cue from some German manufacturers, but I think it looks pretty good. That's a very interesting... If you look at this section right here, this glass shape, and how this chrome trim comes down, it just gives it a very elegant look, which I really like. I mean, this is a really good looking car, and not good, look, good looking car for a 20 year old, good looking car for the older crowds. It's an elegant look, and that's the nice thing about it. Now, another thing with this car. See, Genesis is, I keep saying it's a new company, it's not the newest company out there, but they're kind of new to the luxury car world. This door, you can lock and unlock from the handle. So it works, there we go. But you can't do that from the back doors. I mean, this is what luxury cars are about. You want to be able to do that from the back. You can't lock it, you can't unlock it. And that's kind of an oversight that I wish they would fix. Going back to the back, we have the same slash design that I really like. This is, this, they started doing this and it gives this car a theme or it gives their cars, not just this one, a theme or a character that tells you you cannot mistake this any, for anything else but a Genesis. They're establishing their brand and that is very good and I hope they continue on it. Genesis is written in a very nice font here and there's not overcrowdedness of badging. There's just a GV70 Genesis and that's about it. But then we look at the little stuff. This door is so low that they didn't really put the button here but then it, the door is actually almost sticking out past the bumper. So any hit here, you're gonna damage this door. That from a functionality standpoint, the little, the design kinda took over functionality. But because this is so low and they didn't wanna put it here where you have to kneel down, they actually put the door to open this right here, which is pretty cool. Let's open this back hatch and look here. Automatic back door, of course. Motors are integrated into the shocks right here that open the door. This is a pretty standard thing with the automotive industry. Interesting thing here, the backup camera is actually here. Usually it's somewhere down, but this is here or somewhere more up. But because this is so low, they actually put it here. This is kind of an interesting spot. Same thing with the license plate lights. Two buttons, one of them closes the back. No, we do not want to close the back yet. One of them closes the back, one of them locks the doors and closes it. The back here is pretty spacious. The slope of the back does take a little bit, but not too much space. But what I truly admire here is the material choice here. This is not, this is usually the area that most people, if you put the cheapest carpet here, people will not mind, but they still did this carpet. This is a very nice carpet here all around, and that is pretty cool. Even the handle here doesn't feel like some flimsy normal handle. They put some effort and emphasis. Same thing here. And this, they did not have to do that. They could have left it open, but they did it like this to make it look nice because that's what luxury cars are about. Otherwise, what's the difference between this and a Palisade? I think a Palisade is a really nice car too. You have your Tanu cover that has a place that hides away. You open this, you have... You can actually plug this and use it as an outlet, which is pretty cool. You have some other stuff that come with the car. But here's where the hump is. You notice this 
This right here is actually the space taken away by the inverter that sits on top of the rear motor. Some space, storage space, but it's not the biggest underneath this. No third row on this. And the seats fold. What I like about them is they put a little handle here because this is pretty, if, you, if they put the handle on the back seats, you have, this is a pretty long reach. You just do this and the seats come back. And that is the Genesis GV70. Well, let's take a look at the interior of the GV70. And this is where that high price of this car truly comes about and you really see it and you start to appreciate why did we pay such a high price for this car. I mean, this interior, starting with the materials, in, at least in this prestige higher trim, it is beautiful. There is no other way to say it. It is such a nice combination of really nice Napa leather that feels very nice. And then the stuff that are not leather, they're this material. To me, it looks like leather, but it is not. But it's such a nice material. And the stitching everywhere. The best way to describe this interior is, from even from a design standpoint, it is not over the top in your face, flashy and all that, but it's extremely elegant. And, and that is, I think, something slowly disappearing from the luxury car market. This interior is minimalistic to a point, but it is elegant. The design is extremely nice. You walk in, you feel like, wow, this is so nice. And they've really done this super well. Even the little details. I mean, this is in the prestige model, you have the snap of leather. I mean, this looks so nice and the diamond stitching on the back of the seat, but it's not overdone where it's all over the place, diamond stitching everywhere. No, it's just on a section of the seat and that's it. Gives it elegance, but not over the top. And then there is a fascination in this interior design with oval shapes. There's oval shape all over here. The door handle, everything, it just gives it a very nice touch. And then the, the fit and finish here. I mean, Genesis historically have been really doing well with their fit and finish on the interiors. But this one goes to the next level. They really did a good job here. Nothing rattles, nothing feels cheap. Everything is solid feeling. And that is a very welcome direction that they're heading into. This is an electric model that we're reviewing this week. It doesn't feel like a spaceship. If anything, it feels like a normal car. You go into the non-electric version, it's going to be very similar, and if not exactly the same. I like the little modern touches but they're not over the top for example the hvac controls they are not physical buttons but they have their own dedicated screen that is always there always lit you do all your controls here and it keeps it very simple and that i do like i can get behind that i think that works the infotainment system pretty large screen on this higher trim but this is i think where there's a slight compromise and room for improvement the infotainment system does not have wireless apple carplay it's a little slow to start, it's a little glitchy here and there. It's starting to show its age. I feel like if they update this infotainment system, this would just be really, really good. The other thing is the shifter is a rotary dial, but it's not the annoying type. It's the type that just stops. It has stops on each side and park is a button. I can live with that too. This is actually pretty nice. And this infotainment system does have a rotary dial to access everything in addition to it being a touch screen, which is nice. Now the gauges, they're all screen and there's some customization, but it's not exactly the most featureful screen. It does have that 3D mode, which to me equals a headache. Some people will like it, some people will not. It doesn't really, it feels a little gimmicky. I wish they would focus more on functionality on the screen than just this 3D effect. But I cannot emphasize about this interior how nice it is. I mean, it is truly nice. This is, I, I think this would be a selling, uh, the number one selling point in this car, how well executed this interior is. Pretty spacious, super comfortable. But then there are the little stuff. And this is why, this is why you buy a luxury car. It's the little stuff, little additional stuff. It's pretty quiet, very well. The materials are super nice. But then the little stuff, the seat in the driver's seat is so customizable. You can even change the bolsters. And that is really nice. But more than that, if you put your hand on the on like the buttons that change the seat, the screen immediately shows you which button you're on. I think every car should have that because the settings that you change frequently, like move the seat forward and back, everybody's used to that. But the little other additional settings, especially in a car that has a lot more settings than usual, 
you start to move all of them to figure out which one is which. But here you just literally lay your hand on each button. It'll show you exactly what that controls. That to me is the coolest feature that every car should have. And the Genesis G GV70 does have it and it's very nice. Folks, I've said this a few times, but I have to mention it one more time. If you sit in this interior for some time, it's truly going to win you over. This is just good work, Genesis. They really did this well. And this interior gets an A plus from me because it's, it's a combination of old school, new school, and elegance, class. That's why you buy a luxury car. It's for an interior like this, not giant screen from the from the headliner all the way to the floor and then everything else is just cheap plastic and, and glue this isn't very nice interior let's talk about the back seat of the genesis gv70 because there's something very interesting here i feel like their initial design was this was not meant to be a family suv this was meant to be a chauffeur driven suv which is kind of strange because this is not exactly very big i mean i'm 5'7 it is pretty comfortable this is my driving position i have knee room i have decent headroom but i wouldn't call this a chauffeur driven type car and what gives me that indication is you can move the passenger seat from here that's the first giveaway the second one is on the doors there's lock unlock buttons on both sides that is the opposite of what people with little kids will want kids being able to unlock their door now in their defense you can lock the rear controls and that will all be disabled but it is here which kind of tells me they intended this at least some somewhat for chauffeur driven you do have your own HVAC controls here, just complete HVAC controls with heated seats. That I suppose is very nice. But the one thing they did here that is, you know, to be fair, we usually harp at the manufacturers when they do that. You put this very nice leather, then you put this plastic to kind of cheap out and not cover the whole seat with leather, which is not the end of the world. But I wish they did cover this because this interior is truly nice. And this is the only thing that kind of takes away from it, especially if you're chauffeur driven this. But the little details, continue with this car you do have the same diamond stitching that is not over the top in the back seats but then you look at the center armrest area here even the grab handle for that is a little leather piece not a little flimsy strap that you expect to find and it's fine but no even this is a very nicely designed strap folks they really did well in this car and it shows and even in the back seat, you do see these little touches and just look at that front interior front, like the dash design and everything. It just looks beautiful. They really did this interior very, very well. Even though it's not exactly a chauffeur driven car and probably people will use it for families, but still, it's very nice. Let's talk about some things I do not like about the Genesis GV70. Starting with the electrified model, which really, is one of the things I do not like about it. This thing is very expensive, very expensive, and it puts it deep into territory, some seriously good luxury SUVs. The electrified version though, it feels experimental. It feels like they could do little work to make it actually very good, and then it's truly competitive at this price. The first thing is it lacks a long range version and at 236 miles i feel like we could do better that is a little bit on the shorter side makes sense for a base model but there is no other option for range and then things behind the scenes feels experimental they lack the exclusivity they feel like they basically took a hyundai system put it here proved it a little bit and let's go they needed to come up with a system unique to this because this is such a nice suv and to have this short range and really not very refined electric system is something to be improved on, I suppose. But then again, we do have the non-electric versions, which are cheaper and they're equally nice. Because what makes this special, in my opinion, is that interior and the way it looks and the whole overall execution of the car. Not exactly the electric system, but you can get it for a lower price in the non-electric model. Now, the last thing that is basically all the lineup, the door handle situation. It's not the end of the world, but again, you are paying a high price for a luxury car. You want it to have these features. And this one, you can only lock and lock the doors without having to take out the key from the front seat, from the front doors. I feel like they could have done that and they should easily in the upcoming update. 
So should you buy a Genesis GV70? Folks, this is truly an impressive SUV. Truth have to be said. The execution here is very, very well. I feel like they did not focus on wow factors from like cutting edge technology and all that, even though this is very well equipped, but they focused on material choice. They focused on elegant design. This car gives you an impression when you see it, when you step inside of it, gives you an impression of class, elegance, and sophistication. And that is something that is slowly going away from some luxury cars in this segment. This one does that really, really well. The fit and finish outside, with the exception of the hood, is pretty good. And the inside is truly impressive. I mean, usually when you option a luxury car to its top trim, you just look at it and I'm like, eh. I'm paying all this high price, but I just don't feel like this is truly the special version. Here though, you walk into this interior, it is just beautiful. Beautifully laid out, beautiful design, very nice materials, very well put together. They really executed this interior extremely well. And that is the biggest thing about this car, is how it looks, how it feels, how the, everything is on the inside. Now, no car is perfect, of course, so the electric version in itself, could use some work. And by some work, I mean a lot of work. There is a non-electric version, which the 2.5 or the 3.5, whichever works for your needs. I think it's truly an impressive car, the way they executed everything, which makes it really good. The electric part though, it could use some work and I hope they work on it because this is truly a nice car. Now, long-term reliability remains a question mark. Genesis is somewhat of a newish brand, but their parent company, Hyundai, Historically, they don't have the best long, long-term reliability. However, what offsets that is a very long new car warranty, which helps, and that is the facts about the Genesis GV70. Folks, this is truly an impressive car from a luxury standpoint. You pay a higher price, you get something very nice and very unique. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some other videos. Until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have yourself a wonderful day.